What's up everybody, Tyler Caton here with Weld.com. Today, I'm gonna to be going over Canon Weld's TIG ACDC 201 Pulse D Welder. I did get a chance to play around with this a little bit before setting up. Can't wait to show you guys what this is capable of. Now, it's a two and a half welder, and as in the name, ACDC, it is able to use alternating currents. If you need to weld aluminum and magnesium, you can do that with no problem. And also in the name, Pulse, it does have a lot of Pulse features for if you're welding on thin material or you need to reduce your heat input. So that's also a really great feature to have, especially in a small package that is only, you know, 29 pounds. So it's really light. And if you need to do some stick welding, it's also capable of that and has some features to play around with that as well. It is generator compatible. And like I said, it's only 29 pounds. It's pretty light. And on top of that, it's got a pretty robust case, a nice hefty power switch here on the back. And it's got metal face plates. I know I've seen a lot made of plastic and they can break. So if you need to take this thing with you, like on a job site and you need a little TIG welder, that's pretty much capable of most of your needs. Let's run some tests and see what it's really capable of. So let's start off with our stinger and our torch. So it comes with a pretty like standard stinger, some maple leaves there, our stinger hand, very Canadian, I love the branding. And then let's go over to our torch here. Now, the first thing I noticed when I went to put this together is, it has a really nice rugged covering to protect our cables, which I really like because a lot of them can be like cheap that you find certain websites or whatever. And they kind of just melt and I've had it where it melted right through that and it didn't save my hoses. So this is really nice. And then one of the other features that I really like, they made it so that it pivots. And what I really like about that, if you're sitting there and you're moving your torch around a lot, picking it up on and off, whatever you use to hold your torch on your table or you're slinging it around something. When you bend this, there's no weak point here from the connection of the torch to your cable and allows the torch handle to move freely. That's a really nice feature. Now, this is like an ergonomic grip, nice thick rubber coating, but one of my favorite features that I noticed about the handle itself is it actually has a button right on it. So you can set up either with your foot pedal on high frequency, or you can use this button I was playing around with it a little bit. I was uh, actually welding some studs uh, on the floor and I was using this and it works rather well. And then it's 26 series torch and it's a flex. So it comes with a flex head, which I definitely prefer over something that's rigid. That way you can kind of move it around. Now they do give you some consumables. Uh, this is their back cap. I was welding some stainless stuff. So I actually put on one of my larger cups. Here is the consumable package it comes with. There's some collet bodies, a number seven and number eight cup. So that's pretty good. We're gonna slap the uh, number seven on when we do our aluminum. But for the stainless, I definitely prefer a little bit larger of a cup. So that's just what I'm personally rolling with for this. Next, go over to our ground clamp here. It's just, you know, your standard clamp on ground clamp. You know, nothing super fancy. All it needs to do is carry that current. Now, one of the neat things I noticed, I've never seen a foot pedal like this. At least I've never used one. It looks a little bit larger. The first thing I noticed when I picked it up is, it has a knob on the inside. And I'm like, well, that's interesting. Why? So the purpose of this is so you can actually dial in your parameters also on your foot pedal a little bit. So you can back off whatever your max amperage is. So that way, say you have a lead foot, and you're one of those people that like to just slam it down. You can actually dial it back a little bit here. And that way, you don't end up dumping too much amperage. This is especially good if you're just playing around with your amperage settings and you're not sure where to set it. So you just set the machine to whatever, but you can come back and dial it back on this foot pedal, which is pretty nice. They give you a nice case for everything. I mean, it looks like you can fit the welder in it and all our components. Stick everything in there and if you're moving or you need to take this to a job site or something of the sort, it's nice to have something to take it in. Now, I know I mentioned consumables. So this actually does come with some tungsten for you in 16th and 332. You're gonna have to wear it, it zincronate it, lanthanate it, 1.5% and 2% lanthanate it. So, you know, you're pretty much ready to weld right out of the box as long as you have argon. Let's look at our hose here. 
It's nice, it just has a little quick disconnect for the back of the welder. Just stick that on and then here's the regulator that it comes with. You know, pretty standard, works well. I mean, what else do you need to do but be really functional? Now, if you guys aren't set up in your shop, or your garage, to run a little more power, you're not set up yet. This is a dual voltage machine. You could switch to the 115 to the back of the machine and use this adapter plug. This is a dual voltage machine and it already comes with the adapter plug. So you'll be able to just hook this right up into a 110 outlet and you're good to go. You don't need 220. All right, so real quick, I'm just show you how to hook this up. If you've ever hooked any other kind of TIG up, it's really similar, but might as well just go through it in case you guys want to see anything specific or maybe you're buying this as your first welder and you're not 100 percent sure how to set it up all right so first we'll start with a torch uh like i said it does have the thumb switch built into it i'm going to start off using the foot pedal so it already has pin connection right here and that'll get plugged up into here if you want to use a foot switch if not just keep it off to the side maybe you want to get some velcro straps or something like that and strap it to the torch here to the cable so it's not just hanging around if not no big deal since we're going to be tig welding we are going to go on dcen so right here on the uh, front of the welder they have a positive and negative clearly marked out on the casing that way it's very easy to see Give that a good little twist and our torch is plugged in. Now our gas line right below where either our foot switch or our pedal is gonna go is again, it's a nice quick disconnect, which I really like. I don't like having to screw things in and out all the time. Quis quick disconnects make for easy work, especially if you're traveling. Make sure it's in there good and doesn't pop back out. All right, then we will hook our ground up to the positive side of the machine. All right, so here's the back of the welder. You see here we have our power switch. And then like I said, I really like these quick disconnects. Real simple, just plug it in, make sure it's actually on there and tight. Last thing you want is this spitting out. Ready to go. One of the things I wanna try welding is this thin gauge box enclosure. Uh, this material is gonna be 16 gauge. This was a scrap part. So we're gonna go on this well bent side here and we're gonna try welding with some pulse features. So we'll start here. This is our power indicator mode. And then right below that, we are going to have our temperature indicator that way if it's overheating. So I know you can't hear the fan running right now and there's a reason for that. It has an automatic on and off. It only turns on when it's needed. It's nice when your machine isn't blaring at you the entire time. Also, it saves on wear and tear on the internals of the actual machine itself since they're not constantly running. Then we'll come up here to the little TIG torch. We have our 2T and then that's 4T. Right below that is just our AC-DC. Switch right between it, super simple. And then right below that, we have our stick setting if we wanna switch over and do some uh, stick welding with it. Here, this is gonna be how we go into our pulse mode. And then right here is our high frequency. So whether you wanna use the button on the torch or if you wanna use the foot pedal, you're gonna need this on. Otherwise, if you turn it off, this machine does have a lift arc option if that's what you want to do. And then right here, this is just a purge if you can hear the gas running out of the torch right now. If you do a split line and you have, say, a torch with a valve, and say you're running some kind of trailing shield or something like that, uh, you'll be able to split them off in the same tank and keep your trailing shield running just by hitting this button. And then you can use your torch that has a valve on it to actually get your shielding gas from your torch. Pretty useful for um, you know certain applications and it's nice that this has it built in because I've had to use two tanks of argon before when I didn't have that option. All right, so first here, I'm gonna slow it up right now. That's gonna be our amperage. Uh, right now, that is our, uh, our starting amp. I have it just set all the way down to the very minimum, especially when I'm welding on thin stuff, I don't want a high starting amperage. But it is nice to be able to adjust that. Say you're welding something thicker and you want to punch and get some heat in there. To access, so you want to change your actual amperage as you see the amperage is lit up. You're going to click that and see how it's blinking. Now we can change our amperage. This is going to be your pre-flow. Click in and you can adjust it all the way up to 10 seconds of pre-flow, which may or may not need that depending what you uh, want to do. Usually I sit around 1.2. It's good enough to fill the area. Right there is our slope up. You see the S right there lights up. I have no slope up on at all. 
That is gonna be our slope down by 0.8 seconds. I just like a little bit to uh, help prevent any kind of crater cracking, but usually I control it with the foot pedal. But if you just wanna let off, like I talked about people having lead foots, you can set that to where you want it. And then our post flow. So pretty straightforward menu, and then you just gotta click the button in when you wanna change stuff. And then it'll automatically go back to just your amperage. All right, so now we're uh, ready to get into our pulse and set that up. So real simple, just gonna hit that button, like I said, and get into pulse mode. Running the pulse settings at 33 pulses a second and 50% uh, there on the background. It felt pretty controlled the entire time. I really wasn't fighting with the heat and we don't have too bad of a heat affected zone either. Like that's, that's pretty nice. This is the other side of the piece to give you an idea of kind of what the joint looked like. It wasn't as bad as this. Like I said, this was a bad part, got bent wrong. Here's what the weld looked like on that. So let's see uh, how well it is gonna weld quarter inch, unbeveled. So I set the machine to 200 amps just to max it out. And it's melting the quarter inch with ease. So on this back side here, I actually wanna hook up the thumb button here so I can show you what that's about. What I like about this torch, it already has a thumb switch on it. The machine, like I said, is capable of lift arc. If you're not gonna be using this style torch exactly, you can still weld without the foot pedal. But we have this on this torch and it's pretty handy when you need to be like, say you're laying on the ground or get underneath of something and using a foot pedal is really not optimal, you'll be fine. Now, where this might really like shine is when you're using 4T and you're able to set up like you're starting and then you're ending amps and kind of just hit the button and run it. But even in just normal modes, if you just feel like using this, like a hand switch and you're comfortable setting up your machine to what amps you want and running it, that's fine too. You just have to hold it down. All right, here is the bead that I ran with the foot pedal. Real nice, smooth stack of dimes. Really great arc stability. And here is the bead that I ran with the slum switch on the torch. One of my favorite things to weld is outside corners on aluminum. So I have this box here, real simple, just two two inch outside corner joints. We're gonna set this up for AC and slap some dimes on these corners. Let's take a look at the welder. Now I did switch over to the number seven cup in the collar body that does come. So we're fully using the consumables now. Let's come over and hit our ACDC button, real simple. And then just like everything else, we're gonna use the knobs to navigate. But now that we're in AC mode, we're able to access AC frequency and AC balance. Now I already had this set up. Uh, I'm gonna run 180 frequency to get a nice tight bead on the outside corner. And at balance, I'm gonna set it to 35%. Let's see what this thing can do. So we are running the foot pedal. I'm a CFH down to 18. I'm gonna be running 16 to 4043 wire. Instead, we're running that number seven cup with the collet body that's been provided and the 16 38 tungsten. All right, so we just ran that 060 aluminum. And here's what we're looking like for a result. Pretty tight, and like I said, it can go up to 250 hertz. So if you want an even tighter bead than that, you can get it. All right, so my final thoughts on uh, Canon Weld's TIG AC DC 2-in-1 Pulse D is, it was able to weld quarter inch with ease, so max up to quarter inch with a single pass with no bevel. That's pretty good. And I welded some 16 gauge and 060 aluminum with ease. And I didn't even use the pulse features um, on the aluminum. So I'm curious how, uh, how thin we can get down to welding. Um, in comparison to other machines I've used with those same features, it's right on par with them. I did get to run a 332-7018, burn the rod with no issue. So that's always good too. It says it is capable of running most rods. So all in all, I think this would be great for your first welder, if you're trying to buy one and not sure what you wanna get. 
uh, for its price point and its package and its features, it's gonna cover a lot of your needs. Also, if you're just gonna be in your garage, how I am right now, how I'm not at the shop right now, this would be fine in here for me to just need something to weld and play around and do anything in here that's not crazy high amperage because again, it has most of the features that I would need to do for most of my things day in and day out. So all in all, I think it's a pretty good product and I'm pretty impressed with it. All right, everyone, that's it for today's video. Again, I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching. And if you could hit that like button, subscribe, and then if you wanna you know, get that notification on your phone, make sure you hit that bell. If you wanna see anything on future videos, comment down below, hit us up on social media. And the best way now to get in contact with us is download the Weld app if you already haven't. Now, if you wanna get some exclusive educational content because you know, growing your skill set and learning from others is never a bad thing and it's never ending throughout all life, subscribe and become a premium member and get exclusive videos and content that'll only be on that subscription. Until next time.